These industries subject animals to enslavement, torture, abuse and murder, and they should have the right to live just like we do, and we need to stop oppressing species. If you don't believe me, you can go onto YouTube and watch Dominion. It's an Australian documentary. We've both met people who took the footage in these industries. They suffer from severe PTSD from what they've witnessed. They risk their lives to get this footage. It's not propaganda. See it for yourself. We've both in, been inside these places and we've seen what is happening to non-human animals and it is an absolute atrocity. It is more than abuse. It's the largest Holocaust in history with three trillion individuals brutally murdered every year. Just You've human never visited my place. How do you know? Because if you had, you'd know that you're talking a load of shit. <laughs> All right, guys, so we got to talk about this extremely entertaining debate between this based veteran farmer and a woke vegan activist. And I'm not entirely sure how I have not come across this debate before, okay, because this is, um, you know, pretty entertaining and informative. They're going to argue about veganism and the ethics behind it okay the woke vegan believes that killing animals even to eat them to consume them like <laughs> we were born to do like you know god told us that we could do right uh apparently that's a crime okay that's like murder to her because she believes that i guess non-human animals are the equivalent of humans and this farmer is going to reject her claims okay and probably the most based way possible and i want to react to it because again it's pretty entertaining and somewhat informative i'm going to react to two parts of this debate here and i'll post a link to the full thing if you guys want to actually watch the full thing so without further ado let's go ahead and roll the clip and what animals do you farm what is your industry may i, I run ask? a goat dairy. first and foremost um i run a goat dairy now for a start we don't our animals. Yes, you use euphemisms such as artificial insemination, which I is I don't great. use artificial insemination. I run my bucks with my herd. My bucks get the girls when the girls are in season and only then. And it's their choice, nature's choice. We allow our kids to stay on their mother. We only take the excess milk. So you're talking a load of shit. <laughs> but you're making profit from animals, right? I'm making, they're commodities am, to you. No, you, you're, I you have sell ownership their over milk them. so that they can get food. They get fed. They get fed better than I do. Because Our argument here is that no, your argument, your argument, in the first your argument, to be made your argument has commodified. nothing to do with exactly what I do. So, and you are you, abusing your animals. No, that's I'm not. what you do. Yes. Let me ask You're you something. Profit if I'm them. abusing my animals, why is it that I can walk out in the paddock, I can call them by name, and every single one of my animals come up and want to rub their faces on me? If I'm abusing them, why are they so friendly to me? Can you tell me what happens once they're considered no longer profitable to you? They what are not. They're them? never considered no, no longer profitable to me. Once they can no longer produce breast milk, they reach a certain age well, where they can't see, be pregnant. Well, you see, that's pregnant. the other thing where you say that we rape them. The thing is, my goats, I've got one there that's been milking for five years. And she's produces three and a half litres of milk a day. Question. You didn't answer our question. What question was that? Once they're considered no longer profitable, when they can no longer I produce eat the damn breast things. milk. Because I'm a canine. What happens with them? <laughs> I eat them because I'm a canine. <laughs> Yo, I respect the hell out of this farmer, bro. He's making some great points. I mean, like, first and foremost, not all farmers operate the way that this vegan is trying to imply that all farmers operate, right? In the sense that they only treat their animals like commercialized products, right? They basically um, force the animals to get pregnant, and then they force feed the animals to make them get big to make them grow really fast and then they kill them and then they they sell them right and that's just not necessarily the case there are farmers out there that actually don't do that they actually do uh raise their livestock and feed their livestock and take care of their livestock and their livestock they have relatively long lives right they have better quality of life than they otherwise would have if 
they were in the wild, right? Which to me, a lot of these vegan people, when it comes to this ethics conversation, I've never heard an argument to justify what is so ethical about leaving an animal out in the wild to die in a way that is going to be very savage and painful because they got to die, right? Everything has to die, right? Everything that's, that lives will die one day. How is that more ethical than, for example, what this guy does? He doesn't necessarily farm that way, but again, he allows some of his animals to live relatively long lives before essentially killing them okay if they get too old they, you know he might go ahead and kill them but it's done in a humane way obviously he's not trying to hurt the animal um i'm trying to figure out again why is that so inhumane i don't understand why is it that these people think it's not okay for humans to eat animals when animals eat animals right if it's not a human it's gonna be a wolf it's gonna be uh some type of predator in the wild that's going to eat these animals I don't understand it. I don't get it. And the death that they're going to experience in the wild, which is going to be them getting eaten alive, is going to be much more painful, much more inhumane than the death that they will experience at the hand of a human who's going to try to make sure that they don't feel too much pain as they die, which will happen to all of these animals. They will die. Um, I, I just, I don't get it. I really don't understand it. And is that abuse or not? No, it's not. I eat the damn things. How do they die? How do they die? I kill them. You kill them myself. Is that not abuse? No. If you were to be killed, would that be a form of abuse? No. No, okay. I've done that. I've, I've actually killed human beings. I was a soldier. I'm an ex-soldier. This is your farmer. I'm an ex-soldier. I'm not, I'm not everyday farmer. I'm just an, happen to be an ex-soldier. So... I have killed people, but I have killed people at the instigation of the government. Not my choice. <laughs> yeah, it's not really that much you can say, okay? Again, I think the fallacy here is trying to equate the life of a human to the life of a non-human animal. I, I don't think there's equivalency here, right? If it comes to the life of a human, I'm going to put the life of a human over the life of an animal, a vast majority of the time. There are some people who might disagree with me on that, okay, when, especially when it comes to their pets and stuff like that, right? But I'm just saying, generally speaking, I don't think that they're equivalent, okay? I don't think that animals are as aware as humans. I don't think that they have the same type of understanding in regards to the universe, they don't experience the same emotions to the same level that we do. Maybe they do. Maybe, I, I mean, I'm no, I'm not an animal. I just don't think that it's the same, right? I really don't think it's the same. Regardless, from an evolutionary perspective, we're at the top of the food chain and we should basically look out for us first, right? Before we look out for anybody else. We're at the top of the food chain for a reason, okay? And from a biblical perspective, the Bible, God says that humans, man, has dominion over <clears throat> all living things on earth, right? We, we have dominion over all things on earth, okay? Every fowl, every livestock, every cattle, every insect, every fish, we have dominion over it, okay? So from an evolutionary perspective, justified. From a biblical slash religious perspective, justified. Yeah, but you murder animals and you no, abuse them. I don't them, murder animals. And you make animals. profit from them. I don't murder animals, dear. Yes, you do. Can I no. just Can you tell me how... Sorry, can Sorry. I just interject very quickly? I think where we're getting lost here in the conversation is you guys want to know at what time do the animals get killed? Well, when they're... Okay. Do the animals get killed when they're sick? Do they I, die I, of old age well, by the or time are they killed I, prematurely? I, okay, by the time I, the animals are no longer viable as milkers, they're 16 or 17 years of age. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to put that into an equivalent human being age, they're 75. Okay. And what do we do with human beings when they're 75? Do we kill them? Well, a lot of people would like to. I'm 70. <laughs> That's a pretty messed up answer. That's a pretty messed up answer, but I mean... You can't blame the guy. He's keeping it 100 in regards to his opinion on this. But what we're saying here, regardless... He's not letting them bait him into saying things to try to 
support their argument, which is, again, they're trying to draw an equivalency between the life of a human and the life of a non-human animal. And I just don't think that it's the same thing. ...of whether they're murdered or not, which they blatantly are murdered, the act of actually breeding animals into existence and using them as slaves and commodities to consume their breast milk is absolutely unnecessary. We do not need to be enslaving others of different species to be consuming their breast milk. Replace it with humans and you'll see how immoral it is. What if we got a group of female women and enslaved them and started stealing their breast milk from them? And there's no doubt that their babies are taken away from them. I think you're blatantly lying there. Their babies are taken I'm away sorry, from them. So he can make profit place, from her you? breast milk. You need he to wants have a her look. breast milk in your mouth. He doesn't want it in the babies. The babies I? are murdered. No, they're not. They're still, they're, my babies are running around in the paddock. What happens arms. to the males? The males, well, those that I can't sell as breeding stock, I keep until they're around about two years old. And then I eat them. <laughs> I'm a carnivore. I'll admit it. I like to eat meat. Same. <laughs> Same. I love to eat meat. Okay? I'm damn near a carnivore. Okay? And uh, there's nothing. There's no ethical argument that can be made. There's no environmental argument that can be made, which we're going to get to the environment here in a minute. None of those arguments can be made to convince me otherwise, right? Talking to me about why I should stop eating meat is like talking to a brick wall, right? It's not, I'm not changing, right? I'm not budging on this issue. I don't care what argument you present. I'm never going to stop eating meat. I don't care if eating meat will save the world, right? I'll just let the world in, okay? I don't care what your ethical argument is. I'm going to live and die a meat eater, okay? If I can't eat meat, then life is not nearly as enjoyable as it should be. I'm just saying, that's one of the great pleasures I get in life is eating meat. I'm never going to stop doing it. All the vegans can boohoo, why, and cry about it. I don't give a damn, okay? I don't give a damn. Actually, you have the choice. You're not a carnivore no, because I we're do all have omnivores a choice. and we can and thrive choice, and survive on a plant-based diet. My choice is omnivore. Omnivore is somebody that eats meat and plants, okay? You notice how she didn't say that we're all herbivores because that would be wrong. We're not all herbivores. Uh, humans, there are certain vitamins, like, for example, vitamin B12, that is just not present, present enough in plants uh, that humans need for survival. This is why vegans and these extreme, you know, vegetarians or plant-based diet people, they have to supplement with vitamin B12 because there are a lot of nutrients and minerals that they're not getting uh, from plants because they don't eat meat, right? Again, we, I think we're designed to eat both. Okay, I'm not really an extremist in any direction when it comes to this. I think people that are like, oh, we need to only eat meat are probably wrong. And I think the people that say we only need to eat plants are probably wrong. I think that we need to eat both. I think that the human diet should be balanced, okay, with, you know, different types of fruits, vegetables, meats, grains, starches. I think you need to be as diverse as possible when it comes to what you consume, unless you have some very specific health condition that requires that you eliminate a whole food group. But generally speaking, I don't think that you should be eliminating whole food groups, in, in my opinion. Okay, so I think both ends of the spectrum when it comes to this extreme in regards to plant-based versus meat-based diet, I think are both wrong, in my opinion. I like to eat meat. Wait one second, you just said you're not a carnivore. What, what do you mean by that? Well, humans are omnivores, so that means we can thrive and survive on a plant-based diet. So <laughs> Yeah, but that's not that's not what an omnivore is, right? That's what a herbivore is. You should have said herbivore. But again, she know she would be incorrect factually to say that humans are herbivores. We're not, right? And we cannot just survive off a plant-based diet without supplementation. Okay. It's not natural. That that is what I'm saying. I mean, again, if you take away the modern invention of supplements. Again, humans aren't going to survive just off plants alone. Yeah, He's not a carnivore because otherwise you'd only be able you, to thrive and survive me, on flesh. Excuse me, excuse me, dear. You said omnivore, which means that we eat both meat and plant-based products. We have a choice. Yeah. All right. And so just because you have made your choice, don't put your choice on me. Facts. I want to be able to choose... For myself. Again, something that liberals don't seem to understand. They don't understand the idea of me having my own choice. Let me choose for myself 
Okay, how I want to live my life, how I want to take care of myself. I don't need you telling me how to live, right? They they really don't understand that concept. All right, so let's fast forward to this part of the debate here where uh, they're going to talk about the environment and the emissions when it comes to farming, okay? Uh, so let's go ahead and um, get into it. Uh, so animal abuser then? If so you, if it's dead. You're, wearing, no. you're wearing a belt. That belt, is that belt from leather or is that a an artificial? Yeah, it's vegan leather, yeah. Okay, but it's leather. Yeah, it's not someone's skin. It's it's So it's an, actually an artificial product? Yeah, it's vegan, yes. No, it's an artificial product. Yes. <laughs> That's the question I'm asking. Yeah, no one was shot in the head for my belt. Yeah, but it is, it is leather? Yes, vegan leather. So it came leather. from an animal? No, it's vegan leather. So it's a synthetic material and no okay. one was shot in the head. So and that it's bit not of synthetic material you've got, that produced as much CO2 as driving my car from here to Darwin. <laughs> That's correct. Can I see the scientific resource for Well, the you've only got to go to, go to WHO, the United fact, Nations WHO website. <clears throat> that will actually show you that for every 500 grams of synthetic material created, it uses as much, it produces as much CO2 as driving 2,000 kilometers. Yeah, so the vegans hate this, right? They can't stand when people bring up this point, which is that basically everything we do, even the activities that we do in the name of the environment or for humanitarian reasons or whatever you want to call it, right? Everything that we do produces emissions, right? Creating electric cars produces emissions, trying to uh, switch over your diet from a meat-based diet to a plant-based diet, that produces emissions. I mean, even when you see these protesters like uh, Just Stop Oil, how their whole protest is, we want to reduce emissions by blocking traffic, okay? Basically stopping cars from traveling. I'm not sure people know that these cars are actually producing more emissions by stalling than they are by driving, okay? If you put a car in park and just let it sit there with the engine running, that is putting more CO2 into the atmosphere than actually just driving the car. I'm just saying, right? All the activities that these people want us to do to inconvenience ourselves in the name of the environment, in the name of, you know, animals or whatever, ethics, they, they really don't do anything to actually solve the problem. They really don't. And that's, again, the key issue that a lot of these people are facing is that their alternatives are not good, right? They, their alternatives don't actually really solve the issue. It really doesn't. Animal agriculture is responsible for more greenhouse gases than the world's entire yeah, transport Factory system. But we're not here farming. to argue about environment. Factory we're farming. here to argue about the factory rights of other farming. species. So we're factory going a little bit off topic farming. here. No, factory farming, I agree with you. It produces as much methane as cars. But there and there, animals are not being fed a proper diet. So I agree with you on factory farming. It produces methane. But free range animals don't produce any greenhouse gases. Sure, you can have that opinion or you can find the literature to actually show me that, but we're not here to argue about environment. We're here to say that there's a vegan alternative, so why would you subject someone to enslavement, torture, abuse it's and all murder part of it. for a belt? But it's all part of it. It's all part of the environment. Yeah, and as we said, like there's no difference between the free range and the factory farmed. Yes, the factory farmed animals have to suffer a lot more throughout their life, but whether they're free range or not, they're all shot in the head. They all die when they don't have to. They're murdered. Their life is taken away from them when it didn't have well, to. Well, they do have to. Well, be. here's the thing, right? Here's the thing: is being shot in the head, which is instant death, is that more or less humane than the animal being out in the wild and getting eaten? by some other animal get eaten a lot which one's more humane which, which way would you rather go would you rather go with one bullet to the dome or to be eaten alive and to slowly die while again some predator eats out your gut <laughs> i'm just saying i'm not sure exactly what is the difference right i'm not sure i'm not sure how can you call a human killing an animal for consumption to eat murder and you can't call some predator out in the in the wild that is 
killing an animal to consume to eat to survive how is that not murder they're both murder either way the animal is most likely to be murdered I, i'm not sure if, if i'm not sure what the difference is i'm really not i'm not understanding i'm really not maybe because i want to eat the damn things <laughs> everyone lives and dies no one no one lives forever does that justify murder is that a justification if, if, to take have, someone's life? If you have to survive, yes. We're not talking about survival here. Yes, we are. Right? That's exactly what we're talking about. Humans got to eat to survive. We got to eat to survive. And you can't force me to eat plants when we got meat. Again, animals in the wild, <laughs> they're going to eat meat. I'm trying to figure out why it's so bad for humans to eat meat and not the animals in the wild to eat meat for survival. I don't get it. Plenty of species require animal flesh for their survival, and if you were in a survival situation, then yeah, it probably would be excusable to take someone's life to eat their bodies, but you can actually go into the supermarket and choose a plant-based option. You don't have to subject someone to enslavement, torture, abuse, and murder. I disagree. <laughs> right. I disagree. Disagree. I do have to eat meat, okay? Because again, with a plant-based diet, you're not getting all of the vitamins and nutrients that you actually need um, in order to have good health. Okay, you might survive, but again, it's, you're probably not going to have a balanced diet. Now, I don't necessarily agree with everything that is done in regards to factory farming, okay, in regards to the steroids and the drugs that are pumped into these animals to make them big and you know the meat counter does become a little bit unnatural at that point i don't necessarily agree with all that stuff because i think that honestly that probably has some effect on humans um but just in general i i do agree with the need to farm animals uh to feed society to feed humanity i i do agree with that i think that is something that we definitely need to do and I'm never going to stop eating meat. I don't care what these people say. I don't care how much you cry about it. I don't care how much of an ethical argument you try to make. Because to me, I see no difference between me eating meat, okay, eating a dead animal, and then, you know, again, some predator out in the wild eating a dead animal. Either way, the animal is going to get eaten, okay? It can either be me or it can be them. Since I'm at the top of the food train, right, from an evolutionary perspective, it should be me, right? It should be me. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.